Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on hardware issues. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements from the CompTIA exam 220-701. That's the essentials exam, section 2.2, where we need to explain and interpret common hardware and operating symptoms and their causes. And in this module, we'll talk about excessive heat, noise, odors, status light indicators, alerts, and visible damage. These are the things you run into when you have hardware problems, and we'll go through each one of those in this module. Heat is one of the problems when working with computers that can really tear it up from the inside, really destroy it from the inside out. There's so many different components inside of a computer that are generating heat. Your CPUs are generating heat. You've got memory inside of the computer. Other adapters inside of it, like your video adapter especially, can generate heat. And the faster your computer goes, the more you work it, the hotter it's going to be. Your computer has been designed to be cooled with air. There are fans on your computer that are pulling cool air into the system and blowing out all of the hot air. You need to make sure that the airflow inside of your system is able to work properly. Make sure that you don't have any books or papers in front of any of the airflow slots. Make sure there's no dust that's gotten around any of the fans or any of the other slots on your computer. You want to be sure that the air is flowing. And as long as the air is flowing properly through the system, it's been engineered and designed to be able to cool completely well as long as there's airflow. But as soon as that airflow stops, everything becomes much, much hotter. So if you're ever wondering if there is a heating problem or you're noticing the internal temperature of your computer seems to be rising a bit, check that cooling system you have and make sure your airflow is good. For the most part, your computer is a solid state system. That means that there are no moving parts inside of it. One of the few moving parts you'll find is the hard drive. Another very common moving part is a fan. But other than that, there's not much inside of a computer that's really moving around other than the electrons and the electricity inside of it. So if you are hearing rattling, especially if you've got a new computer in the mail, you've taken it out of the box, you shake it a little bit, and it's making a rattling noise, that's a bad, bad idea. That's a bad thing. You don't want that to happen. It may be just that a component has come loose. Now, there are heat sinks on top of the different processors in your computer, and shipping those tend to pop off, and then you hear them rattling around inside of it. But if there's something going on and making a noise of a rattling noise, that's bad. We need to find out where that's coming from and make sure it's resolved. There could be scraping noises when you turn your computer on. Usually those are coming from your hard drive. And again, that's not a good sign. The hard drive should be a whisper uh, quiet. You should hear it kind of spinning up. You should hear it spinning around, but there should otherwise be no noise other than the hard drive head perhaps moving around every now and then. There's not many moving parts in there. The platter spin and the head moves and that's it. There's some really heavy scraping noise and you're noticing it's making a little bit louder noise than usual. You should make sure you get your data backed up as soon as possible. And if you hear some clicking noises, very often your fan can come loose. There can be things stuck in the fan. A cable might get near the fan. It might be making a clicking noise. There should not be any of those noises inside of your computer. It's a good idea to pop the cover off, look inside, and make sure that none of these sounds are something that's being caused by a bigger problem. And if it's something minor, move those cables out of the way, plug the things in, and you're back up and running perfectly. Rattling noises are one problem, but smelling something bad coming from your computer is a completely different issue. It's often said that the smoke is really what makes the computer go, and when the smoke gets out, well, it can't go anymore. But we know that really it's electrical problems that cause this smoke and certainly cause very bad smells associated with that electrical problem. If you ever smell your computer that's a burning smell or something of that sort, you should shut it down, disconnect the power immediately. It's not a normal thing, should never be that way. There should never be some type of burned odor or some type of really bad smell coming from the computer. Generally, you can find the, the bad components if something is burned out. It's very easy to find that little burn spot. If something is arced, there's obviously a little burned area, charred area left. You wanna check that after you've unplugged everything, after the system is cooled down, and it's probably a good idea to completely replace that particular component that's had that, that electrical problem associated with it. When I first started working with computers, 
there weren't a lot of types of feedback you could get from the computer hardware itself. And you open up computers at that time, and if everything was working properly, there would be these lights on inside of the computer. And if all of the lights were lit, the computer was working properly. If they were not all lit, there was a problem. We call those dummy lights. It wasn't that the lights weren't smart, it was that I was not smart. But if you just had a light that would turn on, any dummy could figure out if it was broken or if it was working properly. These days, there's status lights all over the computer. You very often see this on network cards. For instance, here's my ethernet connection on my laptop. And you can see there are status lights that show the activity that's on the network and other lights that will show if you're running at a certain speed. You're able to tell from that exactly the performance of it. We use it a lot in networking to make sure, do you have link? We call those link lights. Are you at least connected to a piece of equipment on the other side and both of those devices can see each other through the cable? Now, if that's the case, you get a light that pops open. And th this is really useful when working in, in networking because if you don't see any lights, you're just not connected to the network. Those status light indicators can be your first line of attack when troubleshooting those very, very difficult to troubleshoot problems on a network. These days, computers can give us a lot of feedback about how they're performing. And almost every computer these days has a speaker inside of it, a buzzer inside of it. If it's starting up and there's a problem with the video card, it obviously can't show you a message on the screen because there's a problem with the video card. So what it does instead is it beeps at you. If you turn on the computer and you're hearing a lot of beeping noises and you're seeing nothing on the screen, that should be feedback to you that something is wrong. In some of the larger enterprise type systems, things that would go into a data center, there are very often buzzers that are installed inside of those devices and they'll make horrible noises because they have to be heard over the din of those fans and the many pieces of equipment in a data center. So if you hear a buzzer going off, sometimes you have to walk around for a while until you finally find the device in front of you that's making that noise. But now you can see how important it is to have that type of audible feedback. Another great way to get alerts is from lights. And we've already talked about some of the network lights, but obviously hard drives have lights associated with them. There's power lights. Many other computers will have other status lights on them. Make it make use of those. Take advantage of the lights that are there and the information that it's trying to provide you. You don't always have to have a big screen in front of you. Sometimes the answer is to run on a light that's sitting right in front of you on front of the computer. If you've got a computer in front of you and it's been having problems, you may want to look on the outside of the device to see if there's any scratches, any nicks, any dents. The computer may have been dropped somewhere, and that might give you an idea about things you may be able to fix inside of that computer system, especially if you're shipping it. The box itself was dented and the computer inside has a problem. You know that's related to the shipping that you had. LCD displays are very, very fragile. Even the latest, smallest amount of pressure can create problems similar to what we see here. So you want to be very careful when you're working with computers. And of course, give it a very good look over to make sure there's no visible damage that we can see. Let's see how well we familiarized ourselves with hardware issues. Our first question is, which hardware component has the largest impact on the computer's temperature? Well, we talked about making sure your computer stays cool all the time. And the most important thing there is your cooling fan. The second question is, what is the best way to approach a constant rattle inside of a computer? It's a rattle and it goes on and on and on. We should probably want to make sure everything is tightened down, that there's nothing inside of there that might be loose or any cables that may have slipped out. And our last question, in what situations is a burning smell not really a problem? Well, as you might guess, that's a, that's a trick question. There is no situation in which a burning smell is not really a problem. It's always a problem. You never want to have that burning smell come from inside of your computer. Well, that covers what we need to know for our 22701 section 2.2. We've looked at excessive heat, noise, odors, status light indicators, alerts, and lastly, any visible damage. If you'd like to see any of our other free a videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards and much more, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.